Hello, welcome back to Dr. Carey's Clinical Corner. Today we're going to talk about how, what other things you can do to help ease your pain without taking pain medicine. So this came up a bunch in my clinic this week, um, so I thought I'd make a video about it. So a lot of my patients just don't like the side effects of pain medicine, or it's not enough, or they feel like groggy and sleepy and they're like, I can't function, or some people just don't like taking medication. Um, so we discussed, I, dis I discussed with my patients, a lot of patients this week of like, what else can you do? So here's some simple things that I tell people. Try ice or try heat. Um, so kind of my general rules, you'll see all kinds of opinions because nowadays it's like, maybe not ice, right? But my general rule is if you have a, a joint pain, like you have knee pain, you sprained your ankle, you hurt your wrist, um, you hurt your shoulder, those things in the first seven to 10 days, you want to ice. So ice sort of um, limits the inflammation, limits the swelling. Um, but you'll see people on the internet saying like ice is bad because we want the inflammation. So yeah, we want it to a point, but um, ice will help numb it. Um, or you could try heat. So generally I tell people if you have neck pain or back pain, muscle pain, heat is better. Um, but for everyone, I kind of tell them like, yes, if you sprain your ankle or you have a joint injury, you probably want to ice for the first seven to ten days, seven to ten days, and then after that, it's up to you. You know, um, some people will also say arthritis is inflammation, so you should not heat it. But most people that have arthritis feel better with heat, and ice makes them feel worse and more stiff. So again, I feel like there's no hard and fast rules, but that's kind of my general rules. A new injury, ice seven to ten days after that, either heat or ice. Um, so. That's, you know, maybe not going to fully take away the pain, but hopefully it can like lessen it, right? Um, so heater ice is like my go-to. Also, any kind of pain cream, over-the-counter pain cream. Um, so obviously for my pelvic floor patients, don't stick things inside of you without a prescription, without things that are meant to go inside of you. Um, these are for external body parts, but there are pain pain creams and pellets and suppositories you can get for vaginal pain, rectal pain, things like that. Um, so if you're, if that's your pain, get something made specifically for that. There are some over-the-counter things, there's some CBD things, you do what you feel is best, um, but for like external um, pains, any kind of pain cream is great. So whatever you like, Salon Pass, Deep Blue, this, that, whatever, um, you know, I'll tell you a funny story. So I was talking about that with one of my patients this week and she had um, a lidocaine cream that was like a roll-on, like a deodorant. And so you can get lidocaine over the counter. Um, so lidocaine is like a numbing cream. And I even had a patient before who the doctor prescribed an, a vaginal lidocaine cream. Like her pain was so severe, she had lidocaine cream that she put vaginally. Um, but anyway, my patient, it wasn't coming out of the roller, so I put it on my hand to test it, um, just like the smallest amount till it came out. And then, and I wasn't wearing gloves. And then later I was like, that was not a very smart idea. So my hand felt like a little tingly numb. Um, I didn't put a lot, so it wasn't like my whole hand was numb, but a little tingly for like a few hours. Um, but pain creams are great. If you have severe pain, look for a lidocaine infused cream because um, that has like a numbing component to it. So you can get a certain amount of that over the counter. I think it's like 4%. Um, or you can get prescription pain cream too, right? Asper cream, Icy Hot, all of these things are great because you can put them where the pain is. So again, they're probably not taking away the pain completely, but they should help reduce it. So whatever version you like, um, do that. And then some other things. So depending sort of like what is the cause of your pain or where it is. Um, for some of my patients, I tell them to stretch, right? Um, if you have low back pain, maybe you need to stretch, right? Or you have a knee pain, you need to stretch. Um, for some of my pelvic pain patients, maybe you need to lie down. So I tell them like, if you can, in the afternoon, 
can you lie down for 10 minutes? Because maybe that will take the pain away. Um, for some of my patients who have tailbone pain or back pain with sitting, they're sitting on a desk all day, maybe you need to stand up and move um, and move more often throughout your day to prevent that pain from happening. Um, and the other thing that I tell a lot of people is deep breathing, like practice like deep belly breath. So not just in your chest up here, but into the belly that sort of like calms down your system. So those are some things that you can try um, to help reduce your pain. If you don't want to take pain medication or pain medication is not enough, those are some of the other things that you can try. So give them a try and let me know what, what helps you.